what's going on now, we ask the Arizona Secretary of State, Michelle Reagan, to join us. Thanks. Um, Got to be a rough time, or at least a busy time for you. A <laughs> busy week. It's been a busy week. So let's start at the beginning of this. When the long lines were happening, were you aware of it while it was happening in Maricopa County? Were you, was your office aware of it? Oh, we were aware of it. And um, this was my first statewide election as Secretary of State, so I had nothing to compare it to. So as the phone calls started coming in, and our phone lines were, were very, very busy um, from folks, I kept asking people who had on my staff who'd been there for other elections, is this normal? <laughs> is this right. is this compared to other statewide elections is is you know are we supposed to be getting hundreds and hundreds of phone calls like this as i was pulling um people to answer phones that elections isn't their division <laughs> so right keep in mind the secretary of state's office has a lot of divisions <laughs> business services right. and libraries and and all sorts of uh, i had a, a gal who does um, bookkeeping and rc rcp the phones as well so it was, uh, yes, we were aware of it. It was interesting we sent because people out too. <laughs> at first, people were saying, wow, this is great. Look at the huge turnout. Yes. And they saw it as almost a positive. But when people were in line for four and five hours and they found out the reduction in polling places in Maricopa County, it, it quickly turned to people not being happy. And then the accusations of voter suppression started coming out. Right. And uh, we played a couple of the audio bites from your comments about your office being kind of a clerical part of this, but also saying... Why would anybody work so hard to register voters only to stop them from voting? So right. where do you stand on that because of, you know, the town halls, the meetings you're having now? What, what's the stance of your office on that voter suppression aspect? Well, just that is that um, everything that we work for as election officials, going out and registering people to vote, um, especially reaching into the 18 to 35-year-old demographic, which we were so excited to see so many of those um, first-time voters. Um, and registering them, you know, we held um, events with the Phoenix Mercury and Phoenix Suns where we were able to get in front of 4,000 young people and get them excited about voting. Um, you don't do events like that just to then go out and want to um, deny them an opportunity to vote. So we were clearly very disappointed that for so many people their first time voting experience was um, a fiasco. And um, it, we just need to make sure that uh, two things. One, that that never happens again to voters. Um, and two, going back to people who, that we shouldn't, they now think that that's what voting is like. Well, voting's not supposed to be like that. And so we hope that if that didn't discourage them from ever going to the polls again. Um, so it's very, very troubling and it's disheartening. Well, there's a big difference between mistakes that were being made and in the county recorder's office have admitted mistakes were made in the reduction of numbers. They didn't anticipate that many people going up and intentional suppression of votes, which is a small number of people making the accusation. Do you see value in the Justice Department coming and doing an, an investigation from somebody that has nothing to do with Arizona elections? Right. Well, um, first of all, there as far as suppression of votes goes, um, we categorically deny that anyone was trying to suppress anyone's right to vote because it goes against everything that we believe in as election officials. However, we would absolutely welcome and be very welcoming to any third party coming in um, on the federal level and investigating what happened because we think that that's only going to serve to help everybody do their job better. Um, we always say that there's, you know, there's nothing to hide from the truth. So. Um, the Justice Department has already sent letters of inquiry to the uh, Maricopa County Recorder's Office and um, they'll be going through and answering questions and I don't think that's anything to be afraid of. So, Do you work, uh, when, when this happened, do you work with them, does the County Recorder's Office, do you work with them since you oversee elections with what happened in the fallout? Are there questions from your office? Oh, absolutely. There, and finding out you know, what happened to, to ensure it just doesn't happen again. We, we do, and on top of that, not only are we working w with Maricopa County, but you need to re remember that there's 15 counties in the state, and for the most part, 14 counties went absolutely um, wonderfully. So there's also success stories in um, 14 counties that we're going and finding out what went right in those counties. Each county handles their elections differently, so we also need to go as we compile all the information as we do after every election um, you know it's not like this is a, a the only time that we do this we we compile all the information after every election but what happened in Coconino County up in Flagstaff um, that 
went great. What kind of, for instance, without getting too much into the weeds, what kind of e-poll books do they use up there? Um, in, in, uh, down in Pima County, um, what kind of tabulation uh, processes do they have down in Pima County versus Yavapai County? Comparing all those things, because keep in mind again, all 15 counties use different equipment. They all have um, different ways that they perhaps set up the lines, um, different ways that they figure out what kind of polling uh, places or where to put the polling places, how many to have. So we're going to be comparing all that for best practices going forward so that, you know, counties can share information and see what worked best and, and what didn't. Okay, so uh, we've got to take a quick break. If you can stick around, I want to ask uh, what's, what happened in Maricopa County because it was the one that, that it happened in to ensure that moving forward because we have a primary and we have a special election coming up May in general. And then also uh, to talk with you about the town hall meetings you've been hosting and the feedback you're getting from voters. So we'll, if we'll stick around for a few minutes. We'll be back in a few moments with the Secretary of State to find out more about what's happened and moving forward to make sure it's a good experience when you vote. So stick around. So, what do you make of that? Away. Yeah, I reckon it is. Yep. It looks like something's coming. Yep. Gonna be big. Real big. Yep. Yes, sir. Away in Affinity RV. Yep. Affinity RV special event featuring RVs and the RV lifestyle is coming soon. Stay tuned for more information. Escape to the cool pines and beat the indoor excitement of table games where you can win big. Get lucky with our big array of slot machines. And of course, who can go without fabulous bingo? Hungry, dine at the Cedar Ridge Restaurant, the Grill, or the Apache Spirits Lounge. Stay in one of our 40 luxurious suites. Be hot story March 7th through May 8th. Play table games, slots, or bingo go to qualify for grand prize drawings. The more you play, the more you win. See us online or call 800-777-PLAY. Hi, I'm Kristen Merwin. We are Arizona's largest locally owned mattress retailer. Our family started this company over 20 years ago. Why would you go to a national retailer when you can buy a bed made locally right here in Arizona? Buy a bed built in Arizona for Arizona. Visit rsmattress.com today. You can't play golf in the ocean. You want these? I don't want them. I stink! And you can't pretend. George is a marine biologist? Yeah. Why couldn't you make me an architect? You know I always wanted to pretend that I was an architect. <laughs> to be a marine biologist. Save the world, George, for me. I reached my hand in and pulled out the obstruction. On the next. <laughs> All in one, huh? Sign Brown. Monday at 9 on AZTV7. My girl Sandy took advantage of Lowe's worry-free 30-day satisfaction guarantee on appliances. So it looks like it's out with the old and in with the new, huh, Sandy? Ain't no thing. I don't need no fancy ice dispenser. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we going? Where are they taking me? Yeah! Upgrade, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Cindy. Mm-hmm. This stainless steel feel good on me. Okay, we are talking about the elections, what happened in Maricopa County and statewide in the, pres in the presidential preference election, Michelle Reagan, Secretary of State. Thank you for State. calling it the right Well, it's interesting. Name. Let me ask you about this, because one of the things I noticed, well, because I spout off on the air and on the radio show, and we had kind of mocked the independent voters going up, and I said, they've been saying all along you can't vote in this election. What were they thinking? Well, I got a web link, and it says you can vote in a primary if you're an independent. Well, this isn't a primary. It's a presidential preference election. I liked the interest, but it had to be disheartening to some. We did the math. 2,500 roughly per polling place in Pima County, almost 21,000 in Maricopa County. A big mistake was made. Has anybody identified yet what caused that? Just not to point fingers, but to show why it happened so it doesn't happen again. Uh, clearly, and Helen Purcell has, has said repeatedly, she, um, she's, she owns that mistake. Um, she miscalculated uh, very much so in the, the interest of people that were going to show up at the polls. crazy. To go from 200 down to 60. Um, and then on top of that, the amount of um, independents that showed up 
wishing to vote and uh, clearly there needs to be more um, information out there given to people for this one election that comes around every four years and y you really can't blame the public when here we go around and say hey independents you can vote in primaries you can vote in primaries in Arizona oh wait but not this one because it's not a primary and it's, it's not a primary and and then uh, you know and then we hear people calling it the presidential primary when in reality it's just what you call it the presidential preference election and it's got this crazy name and uh, but that's exactly what it is and it's not a death by definition a primary so it's um, a very it's a hybrid type of election in Arizona it comes around once every four years it is very confusing um, I think we really need to look at in 2020 what we want it to actually be um, it certainly uh, shouldn't um, clearly the way it, it is now is not working <laughs> well it's interesting because the primary is coming in August just the, that's the real primary but, yeah, that but, everyone votes right. in and, and we, just to clear that up we want them to vote <laughs> in the Senate race in Arizona Senator McCain is being challenged in a primary by Kelly Ward and there's some other people on the ballot and there are a bunch of congressional districts where there will be multiple people in the same party so independents can go and pick a party and and they can vote in that primary and independents can be so powerful in those races absolutely especially um, in legislative races where they're so dominant by by one party or another where the race is in the primaries um, so whatever candidate gets out of that uh, primary in a legislative race and sometimes they have no general election so the independents right. if you want to have your say it's in that primary so we want them to go vote and and it's um, it's very, very hard. The, the presidential preference election is a, a very hard sell. So yes, we did have many independents show up at the polls in Maricopa County. And we had candidates, too, that were sending out emails um, statewide saying, independents, go vote in the polls. Um, Demand a ballot. And, it, and we, know that you, we know that you can't vote, um, but go anyways and demand your right um, and, and ask for a provisional knowing that you can't, uh, that it's not going to count, but just to make a statement. And I thought that was a little, um, well, I thought that was kind of obnoxious on behalf of some of the presidential campaigns. It's interesting now moving forward, because you're, now you're hosting these meetings, and there's going to be one you've added to the list on Monday, correct? In South Phoenix. Correct. It's not um, this Monday, it's the following oh, Monday. Oh, following Monday, so okay. It's, um, I believe that is uh, the 25th. Okay. And how is it being received and when the when the voters are showing up with their complaints or with their with their um telling you what happened to them why they weren't able to the party was changed or was supposed to and wasn't changed how is it being received how are you being received by them we love hearing directly from the voters that's exactly where information from is uh, hearing what happened to them um, what either when they were in the polls or a lot of the people too are telling us, um, hey, I've always been on the permanent early ballot list and guess what, this year I didn't get my early ballot. Um, or I've never been on the early ballot list and this year all of a sudden I received one. So we need to hear those details because what we're able to do is follow up with those specific voters and then backtrack and see what happened um, with their specific cases so we can try to see if there's some sort of pattern. In, you know, comparing. Is it too early to tell if you found any patterns, or have we're you, starting I, to find okay. some patterns? And this just isn't in Maricopa County, by the way. This is a, um, this is something we're we're seeing statewide, and it has something completely other to do than with the polling um, place issue. So, this is really good talking directly to voters. We love doing that. Um, we've had some wonderful discussions with people, both in Maryvale, last night at the Church of Beatitudes. Tonight we'll be out in Gilbert which was another area where we saw really, really long lines. So it's a great opportunity to, to get out, meet some folks. And then we just added one in South Phoenix. But it's going to be the special election coming up in May, and then we've got a primary, and then the general. And it's going to be a different experience. People are going to be able to vote. There'll be a lot more polling places, yep. which is great. Um, we think 116 Good. polling places for the May 17th election. And you'll be able to go to any polling place in that election and then in August and November the real primary and then the big general election it'll go back to what's called precinct based polling yep. where you go to your specific polling place and then there's a lot more than the um, in Maricopa County than than the uh, 
116. That's where it, you know it, right. it doubles even uh, a lot more than that. So. Well, I know that you are. It's a vi very busy time for you. We appreciate the explanation. And no, we love elections. We'll talk about it anytime.